in part one of the video, we gathered the data, we left off at this point. So now we need to use this data to calculate our cost of equity. So first thing, let's copy this data over into the same spreadsheet that we've already been using so that we have all of our information at the same place. And I would actually rename this tab instead of sheet two, I'd rename it to CAPM data. So let's get our data. Maybe widen up the columns just a little bit to make it a little bit easier to read, to follow. Make this a little bit larger for you to, to follow. All right, so let's do some data analysis. So on the very top, you'll see there's a tab in Excel called data. And then over to the right, you'll see data analysis. So click on that and we're looking for the regression analysis. So you kind of scroll down there until you find the regression analysis. Click on that and OK. And the first thing it wants to know is what's your Y range? So this is going to be our dependent variable. This is going to be our stock return. So we'll highlight all 60 observations. Again, we have 60 months or five years worth of data here. Enter now. Let's uh, go enter the X. So on the X axis, we'd have the stock return. All right, all those months. And we're going to put the output over on our main page that we've been working on. So right below the dividend growth model, let's put our output there and let's do uh, line fit plots and then click OK. And then you'll see we have our regression output. So we can see here the adjust R square is about 31% for this particular stock. So that's the same as stock market explains about 30% of the variation in this stock's movement. Alright, so let's uh, create some heading information to keep it clean for us. Let's put something uh, here for the header, something along the lines of oh, cap M, cost of equity. Cost of equity, required return, it's the same thing, synonyms. Summary output. And let's make that nice and yellow so we can a little bit of information there. Again, we have 60 observations. And right here, this x variable 1, let's just change that to beta. So our beta is point, for me in this particular company, is 0 0.677. And I want to highlight all that. And I really don't care about all this uh, resistance this other output, so let's just delete that. Let's get rid of that, clean this up a little bit. And we need everyone to use a market risk premium of about, oh, let's just use 6%. Most analysts will use a, a market risk premium of between four and 8%, so I'm just choosing the middle here of 6%. Let's go ahead and enter that in as a decimal number. And then we're going to have to have the next input for our capital asset pricing model is a risk-free rate. So we're going to use our proxy for the risk-free rate as the yield on the 10-year note. We're going to get that information from the Wall Street Journal. So just let's open up a, a browser here. My computer is slow. And we'll do a Google search or a search for bond market data, Wall Street Journal. And Google's suggesting the first suggestion right there, the Wall Street Journal. That takes us directly to the bond page of the Wall Street Journal. And there's the information right there. I want to make the screen a little bit larger so we can see. We can see here the note on the 10-year treasury is 2.22 percent. That's the number we're looking for, the, the yield on the 10-year note. 
I'll enter that in in decimal form. And then my cap M, I uh, would call it cost of equity or required return, same thing. That's going to be equal to the risk free rate plus, I want to use parentheses here, market risk premium times the stock's beta. Hit enter. Let's uh, format these cells in percentage with four decimal places. Again, my computer is slow. There we go. Percentage, four decimal places, and my company's cost of equity is about 6.28 percent. So um, let's go ahead and next to this cost of equity, let's put in our ticker symbol again. So when you print that in, I'll know for sure what your company is. All right, so we're going to make that yellow too. Let's highlight here the area that we want to print. I tell I just want to print the selection. And let's go ahead and put a landscape orientation on here. Print that out. Be sure and put your name on it. And uh, that's it for this part of the project.